Are you looking for a reading comprehension strategy to help boost your score on the GED test? Then you're in the right place. Hi, this is Parker here from Test Prep Champions, and today we're going to cover the rep paraphrasing strategy. It's a very powerful strategy that's simple to use, and it's going to help you understand passages that you read on the GED test more, and therefore you're going to be able to score higher on your reading and language arts sections, but you can also use this for social studies and science as well. So make sure that you're subscribed to my channel if you haven't already subscribed, because I make videos like this often to help you pass the GED fast. So thank you. I really appreciate you being here. Let's get right into the video today. So this strategy was written about by Shoemaker, Denton, and Deschler. This isn't a strategy that I came up with, but I am going to teach you how to use it here in this video. So some of the benefits to the RAP comprehension strategy are that it boosts your memory and recall, so you're going to be able to remember longer what you've read, and it's also going to help increase your attention span. So it's going to help you focus more on what you're reading, and it's going to help you increase your understanding of the text and your comprehension. That's really one of the main benefits of the strategy. And also it's very simple and it's very efficient. It's not going to add a whole lot of extra time to your test taking. So that's these factors here are benefits that make the RAP strategy a very winning strategy to know. And so there's a lot of evidence for this strategy. It's been studied extensively throughout the literature, but one in particular is that it's increased the recall of text from 48% to 84%, and that's a student where, or that's a study where students who were taught to use the RAP strategy, they, the results were that they increased their reading comprehension from 48% to 84%. So that's very good. That's a very significant increase. So just to show you guys some of the evidence behind this method, so you can see for yourself that it is effective. Now, the RAP paraphrasing strategy, what does it really stand for? Well, each letter in RAP stands for something different. So the R stands for read, for read the paragraph. The A is for ask, so you want to ask what's the main idea and two supporting ideas. And the P stands for put it in your own words. So again, RAP R is read the paragraph, A is ask what's the main idea, and two supporting ideas, and P is to put it in your own words. And we're going to break this down a little bit further, and we're going to look at each of these, and I'll show you examples of the main idea and supporting ideas if you're a little bit confused about that. But just for now, make sure that you're crystal clear on what RAP stands for. R is read the paragraph, A is ask what's the main idea, and two supporting ideas, and P is put it in your own words. And I'm using repetition here to really drive this home because a big part of your success with using RAP paraphrase phrasing is remembering what the R, A, and the P stand for. So please make sure that you're clear on what R, A, and P stand for before going any further into the video. Pause the video and add this to your notes if you need to, or rewind the video, but make sure you're clear on what R, A, and P stand for. Okay, so as I said, the A is for ask. You want to read the paragraph, then pause and ask yourself, what's the main idea and two supporting ideas? But what really is the main idea? Well, the main idea is just the point of the paragraph, so it's going to be the biggest or the most important point that the author would like to convey to you. Now, it's usually found in one sentence, so the main idea is typically found in the first sentence or in the last sentence of a paragraph. It could even be in both, but it also might not be stated directly, so in some cases you're going to have to infer the main idea because the author won't state it directly. So another way to find the main idea is repetition. So if you see a different theme or if you see a different idea that is being emphasized in different ways and it keeps coming up over and over again, that might be the main idea. And another way to help you find what the main idea is, is to read the paragraph and think, what title would you give the paragraph? So if you were going to say, say that this was like a news article or a journal article or something like that or a TV show, think, what title would you give it? And just by thinking, what title would you give it? That's going to help you think, hmm, that's going to kind of help you distill what the main idea is. So. So this is just a slide to help you with the main idea. And so this slide is going to be useful because it's going to help you understand how to use the rap paraphrasing strategy better, but you'll also want to understand how to find the main idea in general for different questions that you will be asked on your reading and language arts section. So that's main ideas. Now what about the supporting ideas? So the supporting ideas support the main idea. All right, and these can be facts, they can be examples, they are just the supporting bedrocks of that main idea. So typically, like I said, 
if it's a fact or something very specific, it's probably not the main idea. It's probably the supporting idea, all right? And usually the main idea, again, will be in the first paragraph or in the last paragraph, in some cases both. And so if you see an idea or if you see the first sentence or the last sentence, that's usually not going to have a supporting idea, but it can. So there's never any rule that's that set in stone when it comes to main ideas and supporting ideas but as a general rule of thumb the supporting ideas will be sprinkled throughout the paragraph they won't usually be at the first or the last paragraph so now what about how to paraphrase so this is the rap paraphrasing strategy so what does the word paraphrase really mean well to paraphrase just means to put an idea in your own words so one way to think about paraphrasing is to just pretend that you're explaining the plot of a show or a movie so I don't know what kind of shows you like. Maybe you like Orange is the New Black or Grey's Anatomy or a million little things, whatever shows that you like. So imagine that you see your friend and your friend says, hey, did you see our favorite show last night? I missed this episode. And you say, yeah. And so you, you tell your friend what happened in the episode that they missed. What you're doing is you're paraphrasing. You're taking what happened in an episode of a TV show or it could be a movie and you're putting that into your own words. You're putting the ideas in your own words and you're summarizing. So that's what paraphrasing is. You're just taking an idea and you're putting it in your own words. All right, so let's go back and let's review rap paraphrasing again. So the R is for read the paragraph. So you're going to, in a passage, you're going to just read that paragraph, just read it. Then you're going to pause and you can do this in your head on the test, right? You don't want to be talking out loud, obviously, in the room. So you're going to want to do this on your in your head or you could do it on one of the whiteboards that you're going to be given. You're going to be given a dry erase board instead of scratch paper on the GED test. So you can write it out on there if you want to, but it's probably going to be a better use of your time if you just do it in your head. But read the paragraph and just pause and just think, what was the main idea and what are two supporting ideas? And you don't want to do this for sit there and think this through for a couple minutes. You know, you want to just stop for maybe 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds as you get more practice using this method. But the idea here is that you're just going to pause briefly and you're just going to think about what you just read. So you want to think what was the main idea and two supporting ideas and you want to put this in your own words. So just think in your head, how would you summarize this or how would you take what the author said and put it in your own words? Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of this now. So here's an example, and this comes from one of the famous, or I should say infamous, essays that students come across while they're preparing for the GED test, and that is the Diamond Mining Essay. So let me read this, and I'm going to read this fairly fast here because I want to get on with the example here. So if you want to spend more time reading this, you could pause the video, and you can take your time reading this passage here. Um, but it's not that important to understand the context here. I just want to show you what I mean by this rap paraphrasing strategy. So here it goes. So diamond mining also affects water supply and quality. Water is used to extract diamonds, but water is a scarce resource in Africa, where many of the world's diamond mines are located. Many countries cannot afford to trade a necessity like clean water for a luxury like diamonds. Canada's Northwest Territories provides an example of how water is affected by diamond mining. So again, you can pause the video and you can read this at your own pace if that was too fast for you, but I just wanted to give you this passage here, and it's not important that you see the rest of the paragraphs for this exercise, but I'm going to show you how you can use the rap paraphrasing strategy. So if you really want to get the most out of this video, you can start with the rap paraphrasing strategy right now. You can pause the video and think, what's the main idea and what are two supporting ideas? So if you'd like to, go ahead and pause the video and think about the, what's the main idea and what are two supporting ideas, and then you can take it further and think, how would you put these in your own words? Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to pause the video and try to practice the rap paraphrasing strategy if you would like to. So let's go over this. So I've highlighted in yellow the main idea. So right here in the first paragraph, we see the main idea. Diamond mining also affects water supply and quality. So that's very straightforward. And then I picked two supporting ideas out and I've highlighted them in green. Okay, so again, that was that main idea. Diamond mining also affects water supply and quality. So how could we put this in our own words? Or another, another way of saying that is how could we paraphrase that main idea? Well, one way you could do it is you could just say diamond mining impacts how much water is available and how clean it is. So that's just an example I just came up with. But you just want to think again. Look at that main idea. Diamond mining also affects water supply and quality. How could you say that differently? How could you take those words and keep the same meaning and but say it a different way? And that example here, my paraphrasing was diamond mining impacts how much water is available and how clean it is. All right.
So now let's look at a supporting idea. So again, I had that supporting idea highlighted in green. Water is used to extract diamonds, but water is a scarce resource in Africa where many of the world's diamond mines are located. So you can pause the video if you'd like to and just think, how would you put that supporting idea in your own words? And the way that I chose to do it was with this paraphrasing, miners need water to extract diamonds. Water is limited in Africa where there are a lot of mines. So see how I just took that supporting idea and I just identified that it was a supporting idea and then I just paused and I just thought, how could I say this a different way? How could I put this in my own words? How could I put this in different words here so that I keep the same exact meaning or I keep the basic meaning of it, but I want to make sure that I don't change the meaning so much that it no longer is true to the original supporting idea. So what I mean by that is, you know, look at that supporting idea again. Water is used to extract diamonds, but water is a scarce resource in Africa where many of the world's diamond mines are located. Now look at my paraphrasing. So I say, miners need water to extract diamonds. Water is limited in Africa where there are a lot of mines. So see how I hit all of the main points that are included in that, in that sentence there, right? So if you leave out key information, like if you want to paraphrase it and just say something like, water is used to extract diamonds, there's a lot of mines, in Africa, well, you're leaving out a key piece of information, which is that the water is limited in Africa, which that's really a big central idea to this. So, so, and again, you don't necessarily need to write out the paraphrasing in your supporting idea on your test. You want to do this in your head, but I just want you to see here how quickly it really can be once you identify those supporting ideas. Just think, what does this really mean? And just think to yourself in your head, how would you put that in, in different words so that the meaning of that, so that the meaning is maintained and that you have that same meaning. So here's that other example here of the supporting idea. Canada's Northwest Territories provides an example of how water is affected by diamond mining. So how would you put this in your own words? Think about that for a second. Here's how I did it. My paraphrasing was, we can look to Canada's Northwest Territories to see the results of diamond mining on water. So just very simple here, just something I just came up with. Um, but the point here again is you want to take that supporting idea, put it in your own words, or just think through it. What does this really mean? And make sure that you don't lose any of the meaning of the original supporting ideas. So how would you change this? What would you think? How would you put this in your own words? Canada's Northwest Territories provides an example of how water is affected by diamond mining. Go ahead and let me know down below in the comment section. Get some practice paraphrasing it right now. How would you put that sentence into your own words so that you keep the same meaning, but you just change it up a little bit? How would you do that? Go ahead and let me know down below. So again, here's how the rap paraphrasing strategy works. You read the paragraph, and then after you read the paragraph, you pause and ask yourself, what was the main idea here? And what are the two supporting ideas? And sometimes there's going to be more than two, okay? But you just want to pick out two of them. And then you just put it in your own words. So just put in your own words what that main idea was and what the two supporting ideas were. And so this is going to help you again. It's going to help you focus because as you're reading a paragraph, you're going to start thinking about the main idea and think about that supporting idea as you read the paragraph. And as you get more practice with it, you're not going to really have to pause so much and think that hard about the main idea and supporting ideas because as you're reading the paragraph, you'll already start to get a better feeling right off the bat for what the main idea and the supporting ideas are. So then when you pause after you read the paragraph and you think about the main idea and the supporting ideas, it's not going to take you nearly as long to do that. And then putting it in your own words, you're just going to pause and just, you don't have to write it down. You can if you want to, but for the sake of time on your test, you don't necessarily need to actually write it out, but just stop and just think through it in your head. Just put what the supporting idea and the main ideas are, think through them in your head in a different way, make sure that you really understand what is going on in the passage. And so if you do this and you practice with this method, it might take you a little bit longer. It might slow down your reading comprehension at first, but as you get better with this and you get better at using it, you're going to find that you're understanding the text a lot better. And so that way, when it comes time to answering the questions, you're going to be able to get a lot more right because you're not going to have to look back at the text so much and you're going to remember the answers better. And even if you do, you don't remember the answer, you'll probably have a better idea of where it was in the passage. So it'll be a lot easier to, to check. So you're going to save time on your test, get a higher score. 
And one last thing I just want to mention here is that, hey, there are lots of reading comprehension strategies for your test. This is just one of them, and I'm going to be making more videos where I cover other reading comprehension strategies, but this is just one of the simplest ones to get us started here. So you can take this one, practice with it, and if you don't like it, if it's not working for you, then don't worry about it. Just learn from this video what you can. Take something away from this video, and then in the future, I'll make more videos about reading comprehension strategies, and so you'll want to check those out as well until you find a strategy that's going to work for you or a couple strategies that are really going to work for you. But this is just one reading comprehension strategy. This one is proven to work, but there is no one size fits all. There's no one solution that's going to work for everybody here. So just try this one out and I have a feeling it's going to work for, for you or for most people watching this video and give it, give it a try. But if you've tried it, you know, several times and it's just not working for you, then don't be afraid to switch to something else as I make more videos on reading comprehension strategies. And so you'll want to make sure you subscribe to my channel, Test Prep Champions, and hit your notification bell so you don't miss those videos when I release them. Thank you for watching. This is Parker from Test Prep Champions, teaching you how to pass the GED fast, and I wish you the best of luck on your test prep.